Hello and welcome to More Movies Weekly, number three. And three is the magic number, right? My name is Greg Fisher and I'm joined, of course, by my good friend and colleague, Dave Roberts. How's it going, David? I'm good, sir. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Not too bad. Are you looking forward to getting on with another episode this week? Uh, Looking forward to sucking into it. Let's get on with it. So, Dave, what have you been watching this week, buddy? Uh, Well, I've been trying to catch up on some of those uh, Oscars films, uh, to be honest. Um, Cool. Because there was obviously some nominations which I hadn't checked out yet. Um, Right. So I checked out The Father. Father! The Father, yeah, uh, starring Anthony Hopkins. And if he wins the Oscar for Best Actor, he will be the oldest person to ever do so, apparently. Wow. Wow. Come on, come on. Um, yeah, really great film, really great performance. I can see why he's been nominated for uh, Best Actor. It's really stark performance. Yeah, from what I understand it, it's about a man who's suffering from Alzheimer's disease and his relationship with his daughter and how that's affected by the disease. Is that right? It is, yeah. And they do this really... Um, obviously, it's an amazing performance of him going through all these different emotions because he... Yeah. obviously can't remember what's happening so one minute he can be angry the next he can be very sad you know and it's flick of a switch kind of thing and um but they do this amazing um technique where they kind of scenes are repeated but with different actors and um, oh wow so you kind of you're almost in his mind of how he's seeing things happen um, yeah so it's really it's powerful. Kind of tried to translate the disease fr- through the medium. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they've done a really great job of it. It's really worth checking out. Um, you can see why it's been nominated. And Olivia Coleman in there as well. Of course. I imagine she does a great job. She does, as always. She um, she really pulls off always that kind of deep um, emotional struggle, but just doing it through the kind of face, you know, you look into her eyes and it's almost like she's bearing her soul, you know, it's, uh, she does very well with that kind of thing. I think always really. Cool. So what else you've been seeing? Uh, I also watched uh, One Night in Miami. Okay, cool. Which I want to see that too. I haven't seen that yet. Was that good? It was, it was very good. It's also up for the best supporting actor um, in the nominations. Uh, It's an interesting film. It's about, um, Malcolm X, Sam Cooke, uh, Cassius Clay, and Jim Brown, the NFL player. Um, after Cassius Clay wins his world title, they all meet up in Isn't a Isn't his name room. Muhammad Ali at this point, then? His mama named Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, no, so the, the very end of the film is the press conference where he changes Reveals his name. It. Yeah. And this is like the, the... He's won the world title. They're in the hotel room. Which actually happened, but obviously it's a fictionalised account of what happened. Sure. And um, it's kind of the conversation between um, Malcolm X, um, Cassius deciding to join the, the Brotherhood um, and uh, the other two, and they're just kind of talking over the ideas. What's really fascinating about it, I think, is um, allowing these four big personalities um, to really debate the movement that Malcolm X represented um, sure. and the methods and stuff like that and, and the ideas of black suppression, but kind of them are questioning each other on what's right, what's yeah. the right approach and all those kind of things, which was which is fascinating to, to watch really. It's a really well-performed and well-written film. So it's, uh, yeah, well worth checking out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one on a vaguely similar topic i watched uh, the united states versus billy holiday i've actually done a film in five review for that which you can check out on our youtube channel here we'll put a link below so you can see that video uh, but that also covers um you know a certain amount of um similar ground there in terms of how billy holiday the famous jazz singer was uh targeted by the fbi um uh Basically, they went after her for being a drug addict, but really what they were trying to do was stop her from singing the song Strange Fruit, which is obviously, you know, a very powerful comment on racism, particularly in the South, about them lynching black people. So it's them finding an excuse to to chase her down, really, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, I mean, in my opinion, a film definitely worth seeing. Uh, As I say, you can check out my Film in 5 review for that that we've posted up, so... um, 
you can do that via the website. There's a link below. Talking of these these issues as well, did you um, hear about uh, the James Mangold situation with uh, the, the new Georgia bill? Uh, I heard briefly about it, but I, d- I didn't read deeply into it. Um, it's the Indiana so, Jones film, isn't it? Well, yeah, he's going to be the director now of Indiana Jones 5 after S- Spielberg stepped down uh, to just an executive producer role. But uh, with this bill, SB202, um, this omnibus bill that they've brought out in Georgia, which basically is a huge thing that's uh, in- introduced all these different... Um, laws into effect that basically translate to voter suppression. So one of the things in this um, bill is that they've halved the amount of time people have to get a mail-in ballot in. They're also brought in things like uh, only people who work at the polling stations would be allowed to give out water or food to people waiting in line. For anyone else, that would be illegal. You know, really, really shady stuff, you know. And I, it's obviously been put through because, um, you know, they got... Um, they got a Democrat in Georgia, which they weren't expecting to just before the, uh, you know, election results were announced and stuff. So obviously some shady, shady stuff going going on down south there. Uh, and I thought it was quite interesting that James Mangold had stood up and said he will not direct a film in Georgia uh, as a direct result of this bill going through. So, you know, I thought good for him, you know. You have chosen wisely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this is its not the first time, is it, with things like voter ID laws passed in other states in, in previous times, and it's all suppression. And the thing is, it doesn't matter what side of the house you're on um, or side of politics, it's an uh, attack against democracy at the end of the day. So um, yeah. absolutely stand with him and say, go for I it. I think it, go, it goes beyond the uh, sides of the house now. I mean, there's this really insidious, horrible... Uh, uh, portion of um, the Republican Party that are just out and out crooks, and I'm not a crook. It's obviously they're they're trying to set things in place to get Trump back in next time or somebody very similar to it. And you know, in my opinion, Americans really, really need to keep an eye on what's going on. Just because they voted Biden in and stuff now, doesn't mean they're safe from this kind of um, you know authoritarian government getting back in again. They really need to be careful, if you ask me. But you know, good for James Mangold taking a stand against it. I say. Well, yeah, anything that uh, it is an attack on on democracy at the end of the day, um, which is what it is, you know, um, absolutely good on him and good for anyone standing with him. And it hit him where it hurts in the pocket. Disgraceful. You are a disgrace! In other news this uh, this week, have you seen the deal um, that Warner Brothers have announced um, for, the, for the cinemas? Is this the HBO thing? It is, so... Tell uh, me about that. Obviously, this year they had this whole thing of their films on launch day coming onto HBO Max. Obviously, yeah. because the cinemas are closed because of the pandemic, um, yeah. they have signed a deal for twenty twenty two with Regal Cinemas, which is the second biggest chain in America, um, okay. and to give them exclusivity. But what they've said basically is um, the films going to be back in the cinemas again first before they appear on HBO Max. Um, good. Which is That's a big good. win for the theatres. Sure. Um, the big thing here, though, is um, I, in the past, um, in the deal prior to this pandemic, uh, there was a 90-day exclusivity window, um, and that's been now dropped down to 45 days. So they've, they've just cut it in half. How much you want? Uh, half. That's a bit, that's a bit cheeky, in it? It's a bit naughty. It's a bit naughty. But all, there's also a kind of thing of this is the way things are changing, I guess. Um, and, and that's what's I, just, I don't like expressions like that. I don't like it when people say, well, yeah, that's the way it's going. It's like, I, it's probably true. There's, it's not that it's not true. It's just I don't like it because I always feel like people have the power, not the corporations. The corporations tend to dictate these things to us. But if people really wanted to keep the theatres alive and you know they can do that by going and having great attendance there and also by you know petitioning these um you know big conglomerates to say no we don't we're not going to stand for that and and people seem to be a bit lazy these days they just take it and go yeah well that's the way it goes i suppose that's the way it is 
I think there. No, I think most films make most of their audience in the first six weeks. Right. I, I think if you haven't gone to see it at the theater by then, it's you're not going to. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, I think it's certainly less likely that that's more like. I think in the in the latter half of the ninety day window, it would be more stragglers kind of. Yeah. Oh, we'll just go watch a random film rather than people going. I want to watch that film in particular. So. Um, it just gives another option, I guess, to go on the streaming services at that point, you know. Mm. I never thought of myself as a straggler in terms <laughs> of uh, attending cinema theatres, but maybe I am. How do you think that will affect us here in the UK then? Because obviously that's a big thing for, for the States, and you mentioned some of their big um, theatre chains over there. But over here we've got, you know, Cineworld, um, Odeon, places like that yeah i would imagine this now sets a precedent doesn't it you know and i think further deals um there's probably deals that have to expire before um new ones come into place but i can imagine further uh, distribution deals coming with that caveat of it's a it's a 45 day window rather than a 90 day window um, dirty deals done dirt cheap The question then comes really with, um, I think, how it's released after that forty-five day window, right? Because at the moment, with with you know the presumption is, oh, it goes onto HBO Max or you know whether that's Disney or Netflix or whatever the platform happens to be. Yeah. What we have seen with with Disney, for example, is um, premium films. So mm-hmm. they're released onto the service, which you're already paying a month for, and you pay like a a rental fee for for the for in the early release of, of a film. Yeah, um, and I think that would be that would be really shady. I think. Um, yeah. Want the real slim shady? Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Because that just stops more people seeing the film, and um, you know, impacts people who can't afford it, basically. It's basically greedy, isn't it? It is greed. It's always comes down to greed, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. I mean, that's the house of mouse for you, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so. I'm talking about mice, um, not Disney, but Warner Brothers this time. I've released some new posters for the forthcoming Space Jam film with LeBron James. 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 Let's have a look at a couple of those, eh? Yeah, let's check them out. So, yeah, they've all got a similar theme, as you can see. We've got the different characters in there. Obviously, Bugs. We've got Daffy. Speedy Gonzalez. But, um, you know, basically building up a little bit of um, hype for the for the forthcoming sequel. Is it a sequel? Is it a reboot? I'm not even sure myself. I think it's a sequel. I am, I'm pretty sure it's like Space Jam 2, basically. If Bill Murray's not in it, I am going to hit <laughs> the roof. I am going to blow my stack. Yeah. Whoa! I don't play defense. Typical. Well, Tasmanian Devil's there, and he's my favourite. That was always my favourite as a kid. Taz, yeah. always good fun. Always good fun character. But, uh, they had some great characters, though, the Looney Tunes, you know, pretty classic stuff there. Yeah, they, I mean, they look great. The only issue uh, looking at them is the, the style of the animation looks a bit um, almost 3D too modern, really. And I hope they haven't um, changed it too much in the film. Well, you know, they've got to keep up with uh, the Joneses, so to speak. And um, I'll have what she's having. I wouldn't be surprised if they have. Because the original such a classic... And see how this one turns out. Yeah, it was Michael Jordan, obviously, in the first one. Um, obviously, he's a little bit too uh, past it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. Hopefully, none of the uh, Looney Tune characters get cancelled before um, <laughs> the film's released. <laughs> well, It could happen. It could happen. Talking of cancelled, um, have you heard the news of Army Hammer? Oh, God, this guy. So, I haven't, uh, but I know he's been in a lot of uh, uh, trouble lately. Well, call it trouble or whatever, but, you know, he's he's been under the hammer. <laughs> boom, boom. 
it started out all that time ago when they were rumours circulating that he was into things like um, cannibalism and the, <laughs> and the like, which was all very weird. Dr. Lecter. Yeah. Uh, now there's been a bunch of um, sexual allegations against him, oh, um, so Jesus. misconduct. And obviously films have been dropping him left, right and centre. Um, and now Billion Dollar Spy, which was the last film um, he was going to be in, have dropped him. So he's not in any films now. Um, everyone seems to have dropped him. So he's kind of been, been cancelled and dropped, yeah. Well, uh, I, I don't like the guy, really. I called it uh, back when we were talking about Rebecca on the movie show a couple of months ago, I think... I even said then, I'm not his biggest fan. Previously, I'm 24. Um, had Army Hammer as Maxim. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> he played the role, I guess. You know, I, I'm not a massive fan of armies. All of this has come out since. It was nothing to do with me. I didn't set him up. He's obviously <laughs> just, just a, you know, a weirdo. But there you go, yeah. There's always, I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, it's wrong to sort of judge people on just, on, on the way they look us or, or the way they act and stuff, especially if they're actors acting in a film. But there's just something about him I've always found unsettling. I just, I don't buy it. You know, like some actors and actresses, you just sort of gravitate to them. It's like you were saying before, it's in their eyes. You can see their humanity in their eyes. And I think all I ever saw in, in Army Hammer's eyes was um, bullshit. That is one big pile of shit. Well, that's what he called the claims. He's called the claims bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, these are allegations well, of course. at the moment. I mean, apart from Shia LaBeouf, whoever turns around and says, you know, oh, yeah, the, 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 uh, they're all true. I'm, I hold my hands up. I'm guilty. No I'm one a, ever does. I'm a bastard, yeah. Um, yeah, at least Shia LaBeouf did that, you know, naughty boy and all that, and, you know, disgraceful of what he's accused of. But at least he turned around and said, yeah, I'm, I've been an absolute for the last X amount of years. I mean, there are, there are still allegations, of course, and there's investigations on, ongoing. Of course. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very strange. Like, uh, the, the he had conversations between women, um, allegedly, that depict disturbing messages that ranged sexual fantasies and fetishes of cannibalism to rape fantasies. I mean, it's oh, God, that's strange. disgusting. What's wrong with these people? They've got everything at their feet. They're world famous. Everyone recognizes them. They're in these big movies. What the fuck is wrong with these people? You chose poorly. It's, it's crazy, yeah. man. It's, it's crazy. Because when you could just, you know, yeah, as you say, they've got everything. They could just be normal and have a very nice life. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Crazy. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll see what comes out in the wash there, I suppose. On more positive note, uh, yeah, we've we seen this new. Uh, we watched the trailer for it. Uh, Wrath of Man. Thought we'd mention it. Yeah, Guy Ritchie. Nice to see Guy Ritchie back in the saddle. British director. I mean, obviously did Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch were his classics. They're the ones that we especially love here in the UK. His earlier work. He's had a bit of a bumpy career ever since. I mean, when he got married to Madonna and he did like Swept Away and stuff like that, and it was like, what the hell are you doing making these turkeys? But um, you know, he's the, he's the, I, I like the uh, Sherlock Holmes films. They were pretty good. Um, I really liked Rock and Roller. Uh, I'd have to see it again. I'm not going to argue with you about it. Uh, I didn't think it was a great film at the time, but I didn't think it was complete pants either. Danny, slap him. I, I did enjoy The Gentleman, especially for Hugh Grant. <laughs> play a game with me. Go on. All that with Charlie Hunnam. Very funny. You play a game with me, Ray? I don't want to play a game. Please. No. I said play a fucking game with me, Ray. But, um, yeah, hopefully he's back on form with this one. It looks good from the trailer, doesn't it? Um, you know, Jason Statham, action packs, that kind of classic uh, Guy Ritchie style uh, on display. Um, you can check our reaction on the channel in the next few days. Um, so, yeah, be sure to check that out. Yeah. 
And talking of reactions we've already done and are out there and you can check out, we were checking out the Suicide Squad trailer the other day, of which we've put a reaction out. Again, we'll put a link in below if you want to uh, go straight to that video. It is here on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, that, that looks like a lot of good fun as well. It does. Action-packed. Uh, funny. We'll hope the star packed as well as absolutely loads of people in it. There is. It's astonishing amount of people. Um, there is kind of rumours that it might be just that we're all going to get their heads blown off at the beginning. Yeah, somebody uh, said that to us. I think on one of the comments on the video, somebody said, um, "You know, all the stars we don't see in the trailer are they the ones that are all going to get killed within the first half an hour?" Yeah. So we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what happens. It's just. Uh, it's one of them. Fingers crossed. It's as good as the trailer. Yeah, but to be. Sylvester Stallone playing a full CGI character like that, that is, that is crackers. It is. Let's go. Crackers? Mental. <laughs> so another thing uh, we put out on the website this week was our top five Michael Mann films. So you can go over to moremovies.co.uk and check that out there. Uh, if you're a fan of Michael Mann films, go and see what we picked out as his top five. Do you agree with us? Do you think we missed something out? Let us know in the comments. I'll also put a link to that article in the description here. Uh, tell me, Dave, what do Christopher Walken, Marlon Brando, Warren Beatty, and Anthony Perkins have in common with Robert Downey Jr.? They all like a drink? Well, they probably do, because we all like a drink, <laughs> don't we? I mean, maybe, I mean, it depends what sort of drink you're talking about. <laughs> Soda. What? <laughs> well, that wasn't actually the answer I was looking for. The answer I was looking for is that they all feature in our article This Week in Film History, which goes out every Monday and is packed full of births, deaths and events of things that have happened in the movie industry throughout history at this week in time. So uh, if you're interested in uh, little tidbits and facts like that, go and check that article out. Again, we'll put a link in the description below. Yeah, and also we've been continuing to do the movie of the day over on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. So uh, let's check a few of those out now. Today's movie is Revenge of the Ninja, starring Shokasugi. It's a bloody good laugh. No need to tell them about this movie. They'll see it soon enough. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not feeling so great today. I just... Today's movie is called Alien. It stars Gordy Weaver, directed by Ridley Scott. It's a sci-fi classic, darling. Yeah, really great stuff on the website there. And uh, yeah, always full of great reviews and articles. So uh, be sure to keep on checking out. Then check this out. That's it. It looks like we're done for another week, Dave. So give us a like on the channel, subscribe, press the bell icon for notifications. Make sure you check back next week for another weekly and all the stuff we'll be putting out in between. We like to put a few videos out a week on YouTube. So come and follow us. We will follow you back. We will subscribe to your channel. We like that. Good vibes. Good vibes. Keep going all the way around. If you want to join us on social media as well, it's at more movies for you across most of them. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys, and be sure to tune in next week for more on More Movies Weekly. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. Remember to like, share, and subscribe right here on YouTube and press the bell icon for notifications. You can see more of our news, reviews, and articles on our website, moremovies.co.uk. And be sure to follow us on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them, at More Movies For You. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can support us at buymeacoffee.com, link in the description. And to check out more of our fantastic content, click on one of the buttons on screen now.